Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a quick look at the two different ways that you can apply uncertainty and risk in your cost models. So in a project cost estimation here, um, we have got a description of all the different line items in our project over on the left-hand side. So for example, we've got engineering, material, construction. Engineering is made up of these, uh, what, five or six different line items. Engineering subtotal is this 19966. So first of all, we can add things like a min and a max alongside. So maybe somewhere between 19 and 24, we think is the range. We can add something like a triangular distribution in crystal ball using that base estimate of 19,966 as the most likely, the 19 and the 24. So just link into the neighboring columns as we build the assumption. Same for all the other green assumptions. Total down at the bottom here is just adding up these values. As we simulate, we sample over and over again from within those distributions, and we can see how did that impact our project total cost. So total cost was initially estimated to be 79.55. Let me uh, just get rid of the lines on here for a moment. to avoid any confusion. Um, so first of all, here is the range of possible costs, 72 through to 84. Um, we see things like the chances of going over the original number, etc. What is uh, causing it on the sensitivity? Let me come back in a moment. Um, because first of all, we want to take a look at what is the other way of building in risks into your total. So this is or cost estimate. These are things we know we're definitely going to do. We just don't know the exact sizing of it. There's uncertainty, uh, estimation uncertainty, for example, in what those values will be. But we might also have a risk register. These are the risks, 20 of them as I have here, that might or might not happen. We might have a probability or a likelihood of occurrence driving that. Then we have the impact should it occur. So for example, the first risk, which is a 90% chance of occurring, if it occurs, it adds between one and 5,000. So we can use a crystal ball, triangle distribution, link into the neighboring cells again for the size of the impact. The difference that we have this time is we have this yes, no distribution, um, which basically takes that 90% probability and changes it into, does it occur or not on a per simulation basis? So this cell, this green cell will always be either a one or a zero. In this particular case, 90% of the time it's going to be a one. If I pick, uh, let's say, risk four, which has got a lot more, um, a lot less chance of happening, sorry, then it's only going to be a one 5% of the time. So if we run a simulation, rather than before in the full simulation, let me just step through. I can see risk one has occurred. The value from within the one to five range is 3588. Therefore, it's 3588 that carries through to the end here. This formula is just multiplying the values together. So anytime it's a zero in column G, it's empty. Anytime it happens, we just simply pick the sampled value for that trial. So the base estimate says 44,290 based on a weighted average. If we were to use that value for our contingency, just around this risk register piece for a moment, we'll come back to the uncertainty piece in a moment. Um, we see here the range of values that we might have, 44,290. We can see there's actually about a 40% chance, a touch more than that, um, of it being higher. So if you based your contingency value just on the weighted average, 40% risk of going over that. Instead, if you wanted something like a 90% confidence, you've got enough budget, you should really be looking at budgeting around 73,000. So about 30,000 more than just based on the, uh, the weighted average. And of course, what you can do is bring the two of these things together. So we have the cost estimate, the things you know are definitely going to happen, but you don't know the exact sizing of them. You have the risk register, the things that might or might not even happen, and their impact should they do. And then you can bring the two things together. So you can bring that 44,290 value. And obviously, as we simulate the, uh, the simulated value, and then just total that on top of your base cost, so you got your 71 million plus your 44 million roughly to give you 115 million. Um, and then what we should really be looking at is this 
total value in here of the two things added together. Um, the final thing that you might want to extend doing, and I'm going to dwell on the detail here, is you might also not look just at your pre-mitigated case, but also your post-mitigated case. So you might have mitigation actions that either reduce the likelihood or reduce the impact. And then we can simply take the same value, same calculation logic, sorry, I should say, um, as before and feed that through. So here's our post-mitigated case. And we can do things like compare what does our pre-mitigated cost look like in red? What does our post-mitigated cost look like in green? So the starting point for the green is a little bit higher because we probably paid some mitigation actions um, that drive us up there. But you can see we've severely cut the uh, the tail out of the right here. So the P90 value, for example, we can see is well, 32,000 or million, I should say, um, less. So hopefully that gives a quick feel for how you can use Crystal Ball for both uncertainties and risks. Thanks.